Hello, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Hi, teacher. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. How is everyone? I'm good. Thanks, senor. Nice. I'm happy to hear that. I'm doing good. I do want to apologize. Me quiero disculpar. Este día no puedo poner mi cámara porque I'm having some internet issues. So I am, um, <clears throat> I'm using my phone's Wi-Fi. I'm using my phone's hotspot for internet. So I can't turn on the camera. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, teacher. Don't no worry problem. about it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm glad to hear that everyone's doing good. Today, we are starting week number two. Let me share my screen while we wait for everyone to join. Mientras esperamos que todos los demás se unan, I'm just going to share my screen so that we can start going over the things that we are going to be reviewing. Las cosas que vamos a estar viendo esta semana. So, um, as you can see, como pueden ver, we have a lot less topics. Tenemos muchos menos temas than we did the first week. We have less topics. We will have more time for exercises and for practice and to talk. So, that's good. Today, we will start section three. But before we do that, antes de que we, uh, we begin with section three, quisiera saber cómo les está yendo con la plataforma. Ya todos pudieron completar los ejercicios de la sección uno, dos. Um, is there any problem that you have with any specific exercise that you would like for us to review? In my case, uh, I complete uh, section one and two, and uh, no problem. Wonderful, that's great, Orfana. Super and awesome. I start, uh, and I started section three. Excellent, nice. So you already started uh, watching the video, section three, um, until what part did you watch, or in which part of the section three are you? Uh, a video introduction video nice uh, okay you watched the intro video yes but i don't i don't remember exactly about about what what it was about the topic i don't remember exactly uh, um i watched i watched um on sunday you watched it on Sunday. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay if we, um, if you don't remember exactly what it was about. We will be watching it today, so we'll do a review. Okay. But that's awesome. That's awesome that you already started watching it and reviewing section three. So as you can see, uh, section three we will be looking into. Vamos a estar viendo. Proper intonation for questions. So, you know, like when you ask a question, your voice is different. I'm making faces. Estoy haciendo gestos como que me pueden ver. I'm, uh, I'm not used to you not seeing me. But um, when you ask questions, your voice changes. Um, when you're very happy or you're sad, the way you say things or the tone that you use is different, right? So same goes for questions. It's not the same to say, are you sad? Than to say, are you sad? So lo mismo pasa en español. ¿verdad? No es como que le digamos a alguien, estás triste. O que le digamos, estás triste. So we need to make that intonation. So we know it's a question because in real life, when you're talking to someone else, 
uh, you don't see the question mark, right? So that's the importance of the intonation. And then we will review on how to answer the questions uh, based on what we would like, basado en lo que nosotros queremos. So I want to say that I prefer something. I want to say that I would rather have or do something. Both are words that we use to explain preference. Lo usamos para explicar lo que quisiéramos o lo que preferimos instead of something else, right? En vez de otra cosa. So we will be looking into rather and prefer. We'll be doing some exercises on, on that. We will be looking into the gerunds again. We'll be looking into gerunds and infinitives and also um, doing the knowledge checks for each section. Those are going to be the main topics that we will have for section three. Intonation, rather and would prefer, and gerunds. And then on Thursday, we will review the midterm test. What for? Para qué? Para que ustedes puedan ir trabajando los ejercicios a medida lo vayamos haciendo aquí. Y you can work on the midterm test by Thursday or Friday. So you are done with the section three by the end of the week. Um, and you can complete your platform. And eventually, by the end of the month, you can graduate from this module, right? Any questions so far? Or what questions do you have? No questions, teacher. Um, hello, teacher. I have a question about um, section one. I'm sorry, I didn't ask on time, but I, I didn't find it. Um, is the first knowledge check in section one? I have um, question one, three, and six, I've done it in every way and it everything's go wrong. So I don't know what is, what is the mistake? No worries. Thank you, Gabby, no worries. Okay, we can go over that. So just let me know if it's this knowledge check, knowledge 1.2. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, so, um, I remember we did this exercise uh, together during that class. So everyone will come together to help you. Todos vamos a ayudar aquí para que podamos resolver el ejercicio. And you said that you are having trouble with number one and which one? Three and six. Number one, three and six. Okay, we will do those three. And this is a good review so that we can go over this and it's a good refresher. Okay, so this exercise was about writing the sentences with the past participle or with nouns. So we had two ways of saying this. For example, we already have number three here. We already have number three. So the table looks pretty dirty. The wood is scratched too, right? So here, are we using, before we go into the exercise, are we using the past participle or nouns? Can we put nouns? nouns? Past participle. <laughs> right, I have two people saying past participle. What about the rest? What do you say? Past participle or noun? Past participle, I think. Past participle. Nice, exactly. It is past participle, because for that, we use the verb to be and the verb in the past participle. Right, so torn, damaged, chipped, scratched. And then with nouns, they don't have a tense. No llevan un tiempo, sino que we use the noun itself, a chip, a stain. 
some scratches or a few scratches, a lick, a hole. It could be one hole as well. So let's go back to the knowledge check. So for this one, we used the past participle. How would you say, solo para que veamos cuál podría ser la otra opción, uh, that we could do if we were to use a noun? How would you say this sentence if you used a noun? Anyone? Has a scratch. Exactly. That's absolutely correct. So the wood has a scratch too. Perfect. All right. So let's help Gabby complete number one. This tablecloth isn't very clean. It... It I it has a stain on it, but I don't know, but it goes wrong. All right, let's try it. So it has a stain on it. Let's see. Con el punto al final, right? Because we reviewed that it has some, it had some problems. Okay, so it has a stain on it. What else could we say? It in the blank. It has a stain on it. It does has a stain. All right, let's try that. Let's review. There we go. So, Gabby, you were actually correct. ¿Por qué? Porque aquí ya está it, ¿verdad? No tendríamos que tener necesidad de repetirlo. So, this probably is a typo, but you were correct. We just have to find a workaround. A veces hay que, la plataforma hay que hallarle este, eso que tiene quizás añadido, adicional, que shouldn't be there, pero now we know. So, you, if you wrote down has a stain on it, you are correct. That is okay. okay. You just okay. add it at the beginning. All right, and let's review number six. The walls really need painting and the ceiling. The, the wall. Can be passed uh, or now. Is damaged. damaged. It's damaged. Did you try this option, Gabby? Uh, um, no, it's damaged. Okay. Um. So why didn't we take it? What could it Without be? Without the point. It's damaged. There you go. Yeah. Without the point. Without the dot at the end. So, hey, so now that we're talking about points, dots, do you know the difference between point dot and dot and period which did you say uh, after that so we have point we have uh -huh. a dot and we have a period oh okay point is with numbers nice yes what about dot that is for with an email. 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 For emails or anything in on the web, right? And what about the period? In period. Grammatical in sentences. Uh, sentences. For grammatical use. That's absolutely right. You are genius. You are all geniuses. All right. So it's damaged. Or we could also say that the ceiling has. has some damage or has damage on it, right? So it's an example of how to use it as a noun, right? Additional examples, not necessarily the ones in the platform, but additional examples. All right. That's a good review. Thank you, Gabby. Any other questions that you uh, might have or that anyone might have? Um, no, very thank you. Excellent. All right. Okay. That's a good review. Thank you for bringing it up. Okay, so let's go back to our course and let's go back to our agenda. So as you can see, 
we reviewed the past participle adjectives and nouns again. Some other things that we reviewed were need and keep plus gerunds. We'll continue looking at gerunds today. Not today, I'm sorry, tomorrow. And we reviewed causation vocabulary. Do you remember causation vocabulary? Yeah. Okay. There is teacher because of, for example, as a result. Perfect. Yes, that's exactly causation vocabulary. So why something happened? I was late for work due to the traffic because of the traffic or um, I was, what, what other examples can you give me? What other examples can you think of? Anyone that wants to participate. So if I say, for example, I couldn't uh, complete the exercises, why would you, why did that happen? How would you use causation vocabulary for that? Uh, could you could you repeat the, the the sentence yes so i couldn't complete the exercise and why using causation vocabulary uh, because i write um uh period in a sentence <laughs> i don't know <laughs> because of the time because of the time yeah exactly or or because or do um due to not watching the video of the of how to complete the sentence for the first example that we were doing because of the time that's excellent that's perfect i couldn't complete the exercise um because i was working for example right so it can be also because without the off so that's it right we also review here let's go here describing causation this is keep no this is section two so we can review the vocabulary where do we have So it was section one. It Can is somebody in, tell me where it is? In section two. Section two. Mm -hmm. There we go. Here it is. So we have by, because of, due to, through, as a result of, right? But they all mean the same thing. They want to explain why you couldn't do something, right? So I was not able to do X thing because of, as a result of, due to, right? Then we went through a very quick review of the auxiliary verbs and how to use less of them. Sobre todo for the situations. Eh, como por ejemplo, ¿qué, ¿qué escenarios veíamos en que sucedía la reducción de aux verbs? That you could not say certain verbs to make it shorter. You said that in the news, 
Right. So they use that in the newspapers. They use that in the news on the TV as well. So instead of saying, um, instead of saying, there are a lot of trees being cut, you would just say lots of trees being cut. Right. And then we do the reduction of the auxiliary verbs. And this is just to make it shorter, right? We continue to review solutions to problems, infinitive clauses and phrases. And we reviewed the infinitives specifically. Do you remember how to differentiate an infinitive? ¿Cómo escribimos un infinitive? With, With two. Bar, yeah. Two plus what? The bird in plus the, the bird in the base form. Plus bird in base form. That is right. So, for example, if I have the verb read, how would you write down the infinitive form? To read. To read. To read. To read that's right. What about the verb um, type? To type. To type. To type. To type. Right? Simple enough, all right. And here I have an exercise on gerunds and infinitives. Ahora que identificamos, recordamos también cuáles son los gerunds. Do you remember what the gerunds are or how do you write them down? With ing. Yeah. Right, yeah. so the verb plus ing, right? So for example, if I say talk, what's the gerund for that? Talking. talking talking that's right and if i say um what eat eating eating, eating. eating that's right so and this is not the present continuous right no es el presente continuo this is not the present continuous this is just a form of the verb to say that something happens or is happening, but we are not talking about the time or the tense, which is say, let's use one of these examples. Usamos uno de estos ejemplos que tenemos en los ejercicios. Si pueden ver mi pantalla, ¿verdad? Yes. 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 Nice. All right. So let's go to number one. All of these sentences can be said with a gerund or an infinitive. Todas las oraciones se pueden decir with a gerund or an infinitive. So we can say, let's do the gerund first. So we can say that Dan enjoys reading. 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 Science fiction. Science fiction. Nice. Reading. Science. Uy, I'm sorry. Science fiction. And if we did the infinitive, how would that sound? Dan enjoys to Dan read enjoys science to read. fiction. To read science fiction. That's right. Excellent. So now we will do one each. I will go and just pick. We have the example right here. This was number one. And right now I'm going to open up the participants here to see who we have here. And we will do one each. Okay. So, all right. Let's review number two. Ana Pineda, please. Girl suggests seeing a movie after work. Nice. And with the infinitive? Cheryl suggests to see a movie after work. Excellent. That's perfect, Anna. Thank you so much. All right. Let's see number three. Ivania, please. Mm, I miss um, working in the travel industry. Maybe I can get my old job, old job back. Uh, or... I miss to work in the travel industry. Maybe I can get my old job back. That's perfect. Excellent, Ivania. 
That's awesome. All right. Let's do number four, Ana Godinez, please. Where did you learn speaking Spanish? What is it, Spain or in Latin America? And where did you learn to speak Spanish? What is it, Spain or in Latin America? Excellent. That is perfect. I see that you are experts. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. Let's do number five, please, Juan Jose. Number six. Uh, number five, please. Okay. Uh, do you mind helping me translate this letter? And what about the infinitive form? Do you mind to help me translate this letter? Perfect. That is absolutely right. Thank you so much, Juan Jose. Teacher. And it's yes. possible to use uh, to help. But I remember, I don't know, uh, another course, when you use my, you use the verb in, in, in uh, gerum, no infinitive. When you use mind? Yeah. This verb? Yeah. So I have not uh, seen, no. uh, maybe it's for how it sounds. For example, in number four, you would usually, like traditionally, say, where did you learn to speak Spanish, right? It sounds better and you will usually use it that way. It doesn't necessarily mean that speaking is incorrect. It just means that the best or the most common way to say it is uh, to speak Spanish, right? Um, and that there are some verbs that are generally used uh, with an infinitive form, for example, to speak, right? Or helping, or with infinitives, like helping, do you mind helping me? Um, doesn't necessarily mean that saying to help uh, or do you mind to help me is incorrect, but that maybe there is a more traditional way to say it, but they're not necessarily wrong. Uh, okay. All right. So, okay, um, any other questions before we continue? That's a great question, by the way. Super great no, question. No teacher, no teacher. It's correct. Okay. okay, awesome. All right. So, okay, we were on number uh, six. Okay, let's see, please, can I have... Alma, please. You never mentioned living in Japan before. How long did you live there? Hmm? Hmm? Excellent. And that was number seven, right? But I think we haven't done number six. Let's do number six, Byron. Hello, teacher. And the Hi. number six, just give me. He asked talking to the store manager. He asked talking or he asked to talk, right? To the store manager, right? What about number eight? Let's see, we'll do 10. Francisco Melgar. Number eight? Yes, teacher? please. Okay. If, if he keeps to come to work late, he's going to get tired, fired. Sorry, it's a little, <laughs> little worse. And fighter and fired. Fired. If right. he keeps coming to work late, it's going to get fired. Coming to work late. Now, this is an exception. So for keeps, whoops, I'm sorry. So for keeps, let me zoom in right here. 
we will do the Gerund. If he keeps coming, if he keeps studying, if he keeps graduating, if he keeps helping, if he keeps uh, taking, accepting, so for keeps, we will have that exception um, that you were talking about, right? So we will have that exception to always use the infinitive, form. I'm sorry, the gerund form. The gerund form. So In, you would say- The correct form is if he keeps come, coming, no. Yes, that's absolutely right. Okay. If he keeps coming to work late, he's going to get fired. Excellent. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Can we do number nine, Marcela, please? Debbie plans to study abroad next year. Excellent, or, that's awesome. What's the or, other option? Debbie plans studying abroad next year. Awesome, that's excellent. Thank you so much, Marcela. And number 10, we'll do one more. Number 10, can I please have, let's see, let's do Maritza, please. Number 10, I agree. Helping Jack uh, wash his car. Nice. I agree. Helping and Jack I wash agree. his car. Yes. And I agree to help Jack wash his car. I agreed to help Jack wash his car. That is correct. All right. Now that we have reviewed some more examples, I think that we are ready to continue with today's topic. But before we do that, I would like to know if you see any words in here that you don't know and that you would like to know what they mean. Abroad. Which, uh, which number? Is that? I don't know, but I saw that word. <laughs> uh, number nine. Number nine. Oh, abroad. Okay, who can tell me what abroad is? Debbie plans to study abroad. Like a for foreigner? No. Foreign? Nice. No. Oh, yes. yes. In another country. In another country. In a foreign mm -hmm. country. That's mm -hmm. a super great word. So, um, Debbie plans to study abroad next year. She plans to study in a different country. In another country. Excellent. Any other words that you want to know what they are? Um, what it means when it says dim sum restaurant in 21. 21, let's see. I demand to talk to the manager of the hotel in me. I know that's number 22. Elisa or Eliza recommended eating in a dim sum restaurant while we're in Hong Kong. Dim sum. I have no idea. Let's see what that is. I have maybe no a name name of restaurant. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. Dim sum. Mm -hmm. So apparently, it's a type of food. Mm -hmm. So it's probably the, Chinese food. Yeah. Oh, so this is dim sum. Uh, dumplings. Look at that. <laughs> dumplings. That's dim, yeah. dim sum. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm, now we know I what like dim it. sum is. Yeah, they're good, right? They're good. There's a band uh, which name is Dim Sun. So I had yeah. that, uh, yeah, that curiosity to know. Nice. That's super interesting. Thank you for bringing it up. I didn't know that that's what this were called. That's interesting. All right. Excellent question. Um, any other words that you would like to review? Alrighty, okay. Then I think that we are okay to start with today's topic now that we have done our review. 
And as you can see, in case you just joined or para aquellos que se unieron después, today we will be reviewing proper intonation and rather and would prefer. So we will start the section three. We'll start section three by watching an introduction video. And then we will go into the uh, topic of the proper intonation itself. So let me share the audio with you because I'm not sharing the audio. But here we go. Ready to watch. And we will start by watching this video. Ballet to ballroom and salsa to swing. Learning to dance is one of today's hottest trends and tango dancing is the hottest of them all. Tango fever has spread all over the world. Hi, I'm Kevin Kane, and once a month people come here to the Weeks Bridge in Cambridge, Massachusetts to learn tango. Hi, how's your tango lesson going? Oh, it's super fun. So why did you decide to take a tango class? I was just interested in dancing. And a lot of our friends come here. What's the best way to improve your dancing? Just by going to a tango club. And by practicing hard. Too. How did you learn to dance? By coming to class. And why did you decide to take tango lessons? Because I wanted to keep fit and have fun at the same time. Well, I took some lessons, and I come here to practice. So what's a good way to improve your dancing? by practicing with a guy, but you have to find a good partner. Now we're gonna to talk to a tango instructor, Uche. Hi. Hi. Why do you think tango is so popular? I think tango is popular because it's very exotic and it's also very challenging for people. And once people learn something that they find challenging and it's very exotic, I think they feel very rewarded. Step six, back, collect, seven, and then instead of collecting, you actually switch your weight. What do you recommend for people who want to learn tango? I would recommend starting with group classes or private classes. And after you've learned the basics of tango, what's a good way to improve your moves? By going out dancing with the people that you've taken the lessons with, practicing at home, listening to the music, just feeling very comfortable with the music and then going out dancing again. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How long have you been coming here? I've been coming here for about six years. Why? Because I love tango. And what is it about tango that you love so much? I think it's got great rhythm. I think it's got passion. It's a fun type of dance. Do you have any advice for people who want to learn to tango? A lot of people don't think they can dance until they get out here and try it. I think dancing starts by taking the initiative. Take a class. Do you prefer taking lessons in a studio or going out somewhere like this? I prefer going out and dancing. There's a different energy. It's more social. But there's nothing wrong with taking lessons. I recommend it. Why do you think tango is so popular? You can grow into it. You let your body move to the music and you create a dance with someone. And it's relaxing once you learn it. Do you have any advice for people who want to learn tango? It depends on how you learn. Some people learn best by taking classes. I learn best by watching and listening to the music and then getting brave and trying it a little. You know, learn by doing and practicing. Okay, I'm ready to take the plunge. How do I get started? It's not too difficult. Take this arm behind my back, put this one up, and I just start walking. That's perfect. <laughs> Try step to the side. Good. And then step back. Now side again. Hey, this is a lot of fun. You should try it. This is Kevin actually dancing tango from the Weeks Bridge in Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> From Cambridge, Massachusetts. All right, what do you think about the video? What did you understand about the video? 
It was about Django classes. <laughs> Django classes. Great. That's right. Does anyone here what? dance? It seems oh, like it is just a lifestyle or a tango culture because they look so um, commitment with the tango. Yes, definitely. It looks like it's a whole lifestyle, right? It's their hobby, but they're super passionate about it. And yeah. the people uh, give us advices the take the classes for learn to dance tango. They give advice, right? They tell you that they recommend you to go learning, that it's super fun, that uh, they have like their whole group and culture there. And it's super interesting. It looks interesting, right? It looks fun. Yeah, it's fun and exciting yes. because it's yeah. a passionate dance. It's a passionate dance. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely right. And they talk, you are right. So they talk about how much they love it and how much they like it. And they recommend it to other people. So when you recommend things, um, sometimes people will tell you um, about what they would prefer to do and what they would rather do, uh, which we will review in a minute, which is why we also have the topic of rather and would prefer for this lesson. But before we go into that, as I was telling you, we will go into the rising and falling of the intonation, um, specifically for questions. So when you ask a question, uh, when you ask a question, it sounds different than when you are saying a regular sentence, right? We will review some examples here. Let me move on with the video here. We want you to notice the intonation in questions of choice. Here we go. Listen and practice. Notice the intonation in questions of choice. Would you rather take broadcasting or economics? Would you rather study fashion or hospitality? Would you prefer to play the guitar or the violin? Do you prefer to study in the day or at night? Can you tell the difference? Do you hear the difference? Yes. 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 Nice. So obviously we all talk at a different speed. We all have different voices, but there are some things that will kind of be um, similar. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be about questions of choice. This is the example that we have right here, but you will also hear it in other types of questions. For example, hey, uh, do you happen to like uh, the movies? And then you have the intonation, right? Do you happen to like the movies? So you build the question and then the tone goes down again. Construimos la pregunta and as the sentence ends, the tone goes down to yeah. kind of close the question, right? Mm -hmm. So I would like to have a volunteer to read this question. Do you prefer mm -hmm. to drink um, water or soda? Let me say it like that. So who can read this sentence for me? Anyone who wants to with me. the proper intonation. Go ahead. I try. Go ahead. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey. Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you prefer to drink water or soda? That's right. Do you prefer to drink water or soda? Right? So we give the choice, we build the question. Uh, I'm still making faces at the cameras. If you can't see me, I'm sorry. Um, so we build a question, we make the question, it goes up and then it goes down, right? <laughs> this is not a written in stone. It's not a set in stone. Sometimes it can change, but this is what you can get used to listening to. You can hear this 
if when someone asks you something and you know that they are asking a question. The intonation helps us understand that someone is asking us something. Or for someone else to understand that we are asking them something. So it's not the same to say, can you help me? Than to say, hey, can you help me? Right? Mm -hmm. Porque en la vida real no tenemos question marks. So we need to say the proper tone so someone knows that we are asking a question. Do you have any questions with this? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is really is there a formal. For, for example, I, 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 uh, I have two ways to say, hey, I need your help. But maybe just I say, hey, ayúdame vos. But I, I did you help because it's, it's a formal. But oh, I, I, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's not necessarily very formal. Like mm -hmm. it could be casual, but if you mm -hmm. wanted to go even more casual, like if you wanted to go, hey, ayúdame, like that much mm -hmm. casual with someone you are really good friends with or something, mm -hmm. you could even yeah. say, you could even just say, hey, help me. Mm -hmm. right? you, you don't need, like, cause you don't need to ask if you're such of a friend, uh -huh. right? Yeah, so okay. you can say, hey, help me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, excellent. Okay, any other questions, anyone? Where is the meaning of broadcasting? Of broadcasting. Okay, that's interesting. Anyone does anyone know what broadcasting is? Mm. I don't remember. Like a cassette reading or something like that. Hmm. Okay, okay. We're getting into multimedia, but not necessarily. Any other ideas for broadcasting? Broadcasting is uh produce the TV content. That's right. So if you want to say broadcasting, it goes into TV, but more specifically, um, you will see that people refer to broadcasting as the news or when that section of the news, when they talk about the weather, uh, it is mostly referred to as mm. someone who um, is a TV uh -huh. anchor or a TV un presentador, right? So you can become a broadcaster or you can study broadcasting. Um, it also goes into like the TV production type of thing, but it's mostly well known for news and meteor meteorologists and all that type of thing. So yeah, it's TV producers, etc. So when they ask, if you would rather take broadcasting or economics, they're talking about careers, right? University. So do you want to study broadcasting or economics? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions you might have? No. All right, cool. Let's use this last... Uh, minutes that we have we have about 10 or so 12 minutes so that we can go into rather and prefer or would rather and would prefer so i would prefer i would rather you would prefer you would rather um she would prefer she would rather it can go with any subject right it could be you it could be me it could be them it could be us we would prefer right? The subject doesn't matter. We will learn how to use rather and would prefer because there are some rules. Before we go into the video, I want to show you this image. It's a little bit small. I know, sé que está un poco blurry, pero I like this image because we can see the main difference. Podemos ver mm -hmm. la principal diferencia, which is this one. I would rather take, and I would prefer to take, mm. right? Excellent. 
right? So when we are using would rather, we will use the base form of the verb or the regular form of the verb, take, eat, breathe, the verb to be, right? I would rather be anywhere else. And when we're talking about prefer, we will use the infinitive. Que ya estuvimos viendo la diferencia, we know what the infinitive is. So to take, to eat, to breathe, to be, right? That is the main difference. Now we watch the video so that we can go into more detail and examples. We will come back to the image, so don't worry about that. Nice to have you prefer. Both are used for choices. Stay around, play the audio program, and try to identify the difference between those two. Would rather and would prefer. Would rather takes the base form of the verb. Would prefer usually takes an infinitive. Both are followed by not in the negative. Would you rather take a media class or a health class? I'd rather take a media class. I'd rather not take either. I'd rather take another course than study media or health. Would you prefer to study film studies or broadcasting? I'd prefer to study film. I'd prefer not to study either. Let's join a choir. I'd rather not join a choir. I'd rather not. I'd prefer not to join a choir. I'd prefer not to. I will begin with this explanation telling you Okay, before we go into that, let's go back a little bit because we I want us to review the negative form of it. So we can answer positively. Let me take this off. We can answer in a positive way. I'd rather take a media class. So you are just choosing an option. I'd rather take a media class. Or you can use the negative answer. So if you don't like any of the options, you don't like media and you don't like health, add rather, and we know that I apostrophe D stands for I would, right? So I would rather not take either. So the negative form, it can be um, before the verb, or you can just say, I'd rather not. At all, right? In this example, in example number one, I'd rather not take either. Estamos dando un poquito más de información. I'd rather not take either. En una conversación bien casual, so, for example, you're with your friends or someone you have a lot of confidence with, así como nos decía Alexander, and someone would ask you, would you rather take a media class or a health class? En algo así bien, bien, bien casual, yo podría contestar, I'd rather not. Porque mm -hmm. I just, I don't want to take either. Y, pero si es, si es una respuesta como bien casual, right? I'd rather not. When we're talking about choices, cuando estemos hablando de choices, si estamos hablando de una pregunta cerrada o una propuesta como es, let's join a choir, un coro, mm -hmm. then you can say, I'd rather not, right? Or you can give more information if you want to. I'd rather not join, I'd rather not to, I'd rather not join a choir. So um, that's the difference, right? So. Would you prefer to uh, study film studies or broadcasting? I'd prefer to study film. I'd prefer not to study either. Or I'd prefer not to. Right? Si contestamos I'd prefer not to, no prefiero ninguno. Any questions with this so far? What questions do you have? It's okay. Is it okay? Okay. Yes. Good. 
let's continue. Uh, let's finish the video then. Let me go back to where we were. I will begin with this explanation telling you the would rather and would prefer mean the same thing. As we already told you, but we want to be emphatic, both are used with choices. In case you didn't identify the difference between those two, we will explain it now so you see there's a slight difference in their structure. Would rather plus not plus base form of verb. I'd rather learn English than German. I'd rather not study at night. Would prefer plus not plus infinitive. I'd prefer to learn English. I'd prefer not to study on weekends. Note, both are followed by not in the negative form. And just in case you're wondering how to answer in short form, this is how. I'd rather or I'd rather not. And if you're using prefer, this is how to answer properly. I'd prefer to, I'd prefer not to. All right. So as you can see, so es lo que veíamos that this is the short way to answer, right? I'd rather not to, I'd rather not, I'd prefer not to, I'd prefer not. Or I would rather, también ustedes pueden contestar con otra opción, with a different option that was not offered to you. So say, for example, someone asked, uh, hey, do you prefer the color blue or red? You can say, I prefer, or I would prefer the color purple, right? So no necesariamente tenemos que responder with the options that they gave us. If you prefer something different, you can also say that, yeah? What questions do you have? Are there any questions with this? No, no, it's good. Oh, good? All right. Okay, let's check. We have a few minutes. Probablemente no los vamos a terminar todos, pero we can get started para que ustedes puedan okay. comenzar con la plataforma. Okay. Nice, okay, so the instructions say that we can complete the conversations with mm -hmm. would and the appropriate form of the verb in parentheses. So we'll be in the form uh, of infinitive and others just verbs. Okay? Yes. So okay. would you prefer and to take. prefer to take. To take. Yes. That's right. To take. to take a course in exercise science or nutritional science. Why to take and not just take? Prefer is infinitive. Prefer. With prefer, prefer, prefer. with use the infinitive. That's right. So, to I register. prefer to register. To register. 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 Right, exactly. To register. Register. To enroll, right? To, uh, mm -hmm. to start nutritional oh. science. Okay. Number two, would you rather learn? Learn. 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 Yes, learn. Learn. Without two. Without no, two. two. Without, without two. Just without learn. Without two. Just learn. Because that's learn. the base form yes. of the verb. Would you rather learn English in Australia or Canada? To uh, I think I'd prefer. Daddy. Daddy. Daddy in Australia because it's warmer there. What about number three? If you needed to learn a new skill, would you prefer to attend a class or or to or to have to have because we have prefer right here. Yes. Okay? So or to have a private tutor, someone privately helping you. I'd rather sign up for a class, so, oh, that's a big typo, sorry. I'd rather yeah. sign up for a class than- Hire a tutor. Hire. Hire, Hire. Hire a tutor. Hire. Yes. Because we have rather, so we yes. don't use the infinitive. 
Let's complete it. What do you rather? Join. 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 Orchestra. So this word is pronounced orchestra. 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 And add rather. Sing. 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 Without the two. Yes. In a choir, then play in an orchestra. See to what have. happened here? Because I only have. I have mistake. Yes, because prefer to. Oh, yes. To only have. have. That is correct. So we already yes. have the two, two here. Yes. So if it's already there, you don't need to add it again. You yes. just need to put have at the end. Yes. Right. We completed it. Recuerden que ya pueden entonces ir avanzando en este ejercicio en sus plataformas, please, 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 so okay. that we can get those advancements going. Y no les quito más tiempo. It's nine o'clock. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, see you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.